Good morning. Rise and grind. Ah, yeah, yeah. Every time I come around you, baby girl, something doesn't feel the same. You said that I'm changing, but it's really you. I see how you play those games. Why fit type for a man? Killed it. A queen can make more. Hey friends, it is Monday night. I am just now getting home from the hospital. It's about six o'clock, six fifteen. That's considered a long day for psych, for sure. That's probably the latest I stay. I'm currently carrying three patients, all of whom are pretty sick. One patient has schizophrenia. One patient has major depressive disorder, possible generalized anxiety disorder, and depression is pretty severe and I'm also carrying a patient who's bipolar and a lot has been going on I think today was so busy because we're coordinating family meetings and trying to figure out how to best optimize everyone's medications and yeah inpatient psychiatry has been super interesting but it's definitely difficult to see the limitations of the system and try to do right by the patient within those constraints so it hasn't been easy but I'm enjoying psychiatry and I just wanted to quickly check in because I actually need to get some studying done. I have about two weeks before my psychiatry shelf exam and before entering like my dedicated step one and step two studying. So I want to get some studying in, but I just wanted to check in and let you guys know that that's kind of what's happening. And hopefully later in the week, I can let you guys know what a day in the life is like on the wards, what I do every day. Shower time and then I need to study. You can't even get the scars up for us. I don't know what's up with our love. Our love, you're forgetting all about us. About us, oh. My Jolie, oh, my Jolie. Where you been when I need you the most? You still am my end. This is murder, heart is melting. Girl, you got me. This is murder, bluffing. Made you something, now you're talking. How can I pull it off? Pull it off. Telling me to pull it off. Pull it off. How can I pull it off? Pull it off. Good evening. I am just about to sit down to do some studying. I was distracted on TikTok and Instagram. I feel like I was posting pretty regularly on TikTok and then I realized that with Reels, that people want to see kind of similar content on there too. Oh my God. If you're not following me on Instagram or TikTok, you need to be following me because I crack myself up and I think you would enjoy that content. I'm trying to get back into doing the daily vlogs on TikTok because I know you guys really like those. I feel like it's a little bit easier to create TikToks than it is to create vlogs. I posted two TikToks today. Plot is like out of control. Let's quickly talk about my day before I get to studying. This week we've been prepping two of my patients for discharge. One one of my patients actually submitted a 72 hour letter, which is a letter you submit if you want to be discharged against medical advice. It's interesting because if you feel like the patient is still a acute threat to their safety or to the safety of others, you can then elect to take that patient to court. But if they are no longer a threat to their safety or the safety of others, which I think is the case in this patient, then they are basically discharged within 72 hours of submitting the letter. And so we're basically preparing to discharge them on Thursday, even though they haven't really completed treatment. And while their symptoms have improved, they are not 100% back to their baseline. So it's been pretty complicated. I think today with the team, we've been talking a lot about what the consequences are of electing to stop treatment early, what that means for the likelihood that they will decompensate again, that they'll have to come back to the hospital and be hospitalized again. It really kind of strains social work's ability to arrange outpatient follow-up, although I think in this case that's not necessarily the case. It just strains the therapeutic alliance and the work you've kind of been doing with the patient to get better. And unfortunately, because this person will likely be discharged on Thursday, it also kind of stalls the process that we've been going through with update trading their medications and trying to get them more psychiatrically stable. So a lot of discussions happening around that and what that means for the patient and for the family. Uh, it's hard, I'm not sure exactly. I haven't formed all of my thoughts around involuntary hospitalizations, but I am sad that their treatment is being limited in this this way I truly felt like they were improving and that you know we were able to help them and we are still able to help them I just sincerely hope that they are able to get 
the care they need outpatient, but I am really worried that they're going to decompensate again and have to come back in. Those are my initial thoughts. They're not fully formed thoughts yet, but I thought it was something interesting that came up today, the idea of voluntary hospitalization and what does it mean to be an acute risk to yourself and others and how that impacts our ability to complete inpatient treatment should the patient decide that they no longer want inpatient treatment. One of the things we do before we discharge a patient is go through a safety plan with them. And even in going through a safety plan with this particular patient, it was very clear that they were displaying symptoms of mania or hypomania and psychosis. And it was just, it was difficult you know, to kind of go through the process of safety planning while the patient is clearly exhibiting psychiatric symptoms that you know you could improve if you just had a little bit more time. Anyway, again, I'm not sure how I feel about inpatient treatment or who disproportionately is impacted by, you know, involuntary admissions, etc. But my past couple of weeks on the psych unit have shown me that there's so much value in inpatient psychiatry. And one of the benefits of being inpatient is that you can move quickly in terms of titrating meds in a way that is not always feasible outpatient where you might not see your provider more than once a month. Anyway, just my thoughts. Love to hear what you think. I'm curious to see how my thoughts evolve over the next couple of days. I gotta study. And I gotta order dinner because I'm hungry. All right, Pond, say bye. Okay. Battery is dying, but I just got home. It's Wednesday. I'm gonna jump on my spin bike real quick because even though I don't want to, if I freaking waited for the desire to do things, to do anything, I'd get nothing done. Sometimes you don't want to and you just gotta do it. Okay, be back soon. Yo. I'm sitting here watching YouTube videos. Pons. Watching YouTube videos and not studying the usual. I'm actually about to go to sleep and I got my scheduling permit for my step one exam, which I don't think I've mentioned, but I have to take step one now that I'm almost done with clinical year. And it's pass fail, which is exciting, but it's still an exam I have to take. And suddenly I feel like I wasn't really thinking about step one very much. And now I'm like having to pick a freaking day to take it. And I'm like so anxious now. It's pass fail. I don't know how much I'm gonna have to study for it. So I was thinking about just giving myself a month to kind of crank it out and get it done and over with, but oh my gosh, I'm like super shook. I think I'm gonna take it at the end of January or first week of February. I can't believe it's happening. We'll report back once I finish looking through all this registration crap. Good morning, it's Saturday, which means I don't know the last time I picked up my camera to vlog, but I'm checking in. It was a long week on psych. I discharged two of my patients and they were pretty difficult discharges for me. Both are very sick. One patient has bipolar disorder. The other patient has chronic schizophrenia, waxing and waning psychosis has just been kind of living like that for a really long time. They couldn't be more different, quite frankly, uh, but they're both very sick and to have worked with them from the very beginning of their hospitalization to their discharge, I, um, yeah, I feel very uh, lucky, very lucky to have worked with them. I got some questions on Instagram about whether or not psych is heavy or too heavy or if it's fulfilling. And in the four weeks that I've been on psych so far, it's been very, very fulfilling. It's also been very heavy. And I think I'm coming to realize that a lot of what psychiatrists do, especially in the inpatient setting with particularly ill patients, is navigate a lot of social work. And the psychiatrists themselves don't do that, but the unit that I'm on, we have a great relationship with the social workers and they work diligently to really provide safe discharges to our patients. And so the two patients that I discharged this week actually both discharged to home. But, you know, there are other patients on the unit where they're thinking about housing placement. There's a lot of difficult stuff. And I think a lot of things have come up this week. Something I thought a lot about, the rights of mentally ill folks and how oftentimes, because they're so vulnerable, they lose their rights. And I think this week I really witnessed some great psychiatry in terms of you know doctors really advocating on behalf of their patients and I think the lesson I learned this week is that you know just because someone is mentally ill even with a serious mental illness like schizophrenia that does not mean that they don't have capacity to make their own decisions and I think this week I saw some really great advocacy by the social workers, by the psychiatrists, by the whole care team. And I am left feeling really grateful to have played a very small role in my patient's trajectory. I'm up pretty early. It's 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I've been up since 7 a.m. And I actually spent the morning, you know, tidying up a little bit. I'm about to go put some laundry in, but also chatting with a recent graduate, now an intern in psych, about my 
interests in medicine and trying to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. I've been having a little bit of a crisis, which I've talked about in other videos, in that I've really enjoyed my surgical specialty exposures, but I'm at this place in my training where it's starting to get real. You know, like what am I going to do with the rest of my life? It's starting to get real. This is like the first time in my life where I feel like I don't have a very clear path and I've always been this person who has a very clear path. So it's been a little bit unsettling, but I spoke with a psych intern because I was shocked by how much I've been enjoying my psych rotation, how much I love my patients, I love caring for them. And we had a really great conversation about the next couple of months and thinking about what is going to happen after I finish my major clinical year next week, which is also crazy. I've kind of just been walking through med school as it's been laid out for me. I had my first year and a half just in the classroom and there was nothing to choose or decide. I was just going through the organ systems and doing my thing. I did choose the order of my rotations for major clinical year, but major clinical year is major clinical year. And you get assigned an order and then you just walk through that order until the end of the year. And now I'm a week away from the end of that. In the coming months, I'm gonna be entering the portion of the med school curriculum that isn't as structured. And after step one and step two, I'll have to start picking and choosing things that I want to do, which is just crazy. I feel like I've just been in a, whew, can't believe this is happening. <sighs> when things get done, they will get done and it will happen or something. Anyway, I need to do some studying. I'm going to brunch with some members of my group since this is our last rotation and I've been traveling with the same cohort over the course of the year. We set up a brunch with our school's funding. So I'm going to do that, but I want to crank out some practice tests or not practice tests, practice questions before then. All right. Hans is in heat or something and I can't with her. Good morning. Happy last week of major clinical year. Are you kidding me? We made it. Can you believe that? We made it. Yes, I woke up very sick. I've made some tea for the road. Today I'm going to see ECT or electroconvulsion, electroconvulsion therapy, but I need to head in to the resident lounge a little bit early just so I can finish up a discharge summary for a patient that I discharged last week. Um, it's basically done, but for some reason I can't access some of the notes from home, so I'm gonna go in and figure it out. And then I'm seeing ECT, which is used to treat, you know, major depressive disorder with psychotic features or like really refractory depression that after several trials of antidepressants is just not getting better and is still impairing a person's function. I'm sure there are other indications for it, but I don't know them off the top of my head. I hope I feel better. I slept like crap last night. I slept about four and a half hours because I couldn't fall asleep because I was coughing, not feeling well. And then I had to wake up early to work on the DSUM because I'd rather get myself done early in the morning rather than late at night. That's just the way I am. And even though I had the entire weekend to do the DSUM, I was doing studying, I was cleaning up my house, and I just didn't get around to it. I just need to head in now. All right, anyway, how are you guys? Good, good. Do I look tired? I am. I can't believe this is my last week of clinical year. Like I have five days. Really, dude? I have one OSCE, one written exam, one shelf exam left. And then I'm done with clinical year and I can head into the holidays. And then after the holidays, I'm gonna head into step prep. And we can talk about that in a separate video. But wow, like I cannot believe this. Madness, truly madness. I need to go. friends. Ugh. As you can probably hear in my voice, I'm ill and uh, I don't have the energy to talk about it right now. But as soon as I get the energy, you guys will be the first to know. I don't know if I'll be able to vlog. This thing's a whole mess. I have literally four days left in the rotation. I have three exams, one presentation to get through between now and Friday. And I'm so freaking sick. I'm congested. I have fever. I have body aches. I have chills. I do not feel good. Guess what I have? I'll tell you in the morning. 